Obviously, setting the anti-zinc minimum and maximum to the same value is uh, strongly not suggested because it forces the system to break up the pixels into an even number. And what you really want to do is take advantage of the adaptive sampling. Adaptive sampling will simply analyze the content of the pixel and compare neighbors and only add samples where it is needed. And that will save a lot of precious time. So let's go over the adaptive sampling and exercise how it works. This is for four pixels with a very small geometry that covers these four pixels. We'll, for the uh, couple minutes, will be the renderer trying to render this particular image. So we uh, have uh, an anti-leasing settings of zero up to three. So we really have a range now. It's not minimum and maximum being that's the same value, but really starting with a, in a difference of three. So uh, because it's starting at, at zero, every of those pixels will be sample one. So you see this yellow dot here at the corner means that this particular pixel has been sampled. Most people think that the actual sampling is, is being done at the center of the pixel, but actually it's being done at the corner of the pixel. So what is going to do it's going to compare neighbors. So the color threshold should be seen as being a quality factor. So the lower the uh, color threshold or the anti-leasing threshold is, the finer is going to break up the pixel into sub-pixels to be able to grasp all the details contained in the pixel. So we do make a comparison. So this one compared to this one compared to this one compared to this one. This one there's a discrepancies between this one and this one and obviously it says well there's some details contained in my, in my pixel so I need to break it up into finer uh, sub pixel to be able to get the details so now it's going to go to level one and split up the pixel into let's say four sub pixels and once it has split up the pixel it's going to sample this sample has, has been pretty much done so it will not recast array in the actual scene these one, this one, and this one, which are the three new sub-pixels, will cast rays and render this. Then obviously we'll do this comparison to say, okay, for each of those pixels, I'm going to take a look at the neighbors and say, okay, where do I need to break up? So we'll find out that these sub-pixel here need more detail. This one is fairly constant. This one is also fairly constant. So is going to go to uh, what we call level two. So it's only going to break up the subpixel that requires details. In this case, these two really needs to have more details. Again, it will sample the actual pixel corners of these new subpixels and cast rays in the scene. And it will also run again and uh, check for subpixel that requires more details. So this one, this one is fairly constant. This one, this one is fairly constant. This one has almost no coverage. Uh, the very, very, you know, this this geometry covers almost like 80% or 95% of it. So it, chances are it will not break it up. So now it's going to break up only the one where there's a variation, and again sample the actual subpixels that is needed. So as you can see here, the minimum and maximum was zero to three. So in this case, to be able to render that particular pixel, it took really 19 samples versus, it, let's say for example, the min and the max would have been set to 3, then it would have, in this case, generate 64 non-adaptive samples. It means it would have even break up these, these portion when actually it's not needed. So let's say, for example, uh, every of those samples costs a million dollars, then obviously you've just saved a lot of money. In this case, these samples, uh, every of these points here, uh, we're talking milliseconds. So let's say you have cut down by two-thirds the number of samples, so you can, you can assume that if you do that for all the pixels in the scene, you just cut down the rendered time also by two-thirds, which is really important in this case.